ask me what do the the birds eat, you know? So I said to them, uh, they eat almost like human, huh? Yeah, and they love tofu. <laughs> they love vegetarian food. That, that's why one of the birds expressly tell me that she wants popcorn, but with the rose butter. Have you ever heard of such thing? So I said to them, you know, if you even can communicate with animals, you have to listen to their language. Sometimes they don't know how the human language, <laughs> we use different words, you know, to complicate it. So she asked me some popcorn with rose butter, you know, the white mirabeau. So I said, what is rose butter? I never heard of it. So normally we go to cinema, we have popcorn with butter, you know what I mean? You know, the kind of butter that they always use. So she wants to express, she doesn't want that kind of butter, you know, not animal butter, but rose butter. I say, oh, people don't make rose butter, what to do, what to do. Ah, then I was enlightened. Okay, she means honey, hmm. flower essence. Yeah, she doesn't say flower, she says rose, because rose is supposed to be the best of all flowers, you know. Buy me the best. Popcorn with the best honey on it. <laughs> okay, I got some popcorn with honey on it, you know. And she loves, he loves it, loves it. And they all love that. Yeah. And one day I try the one with the normal, you know, vegetarian butter on it. They don't eat it. So I know for sure I was right, you know. Really, she want rose butter. Well, who will ever heard of rose butter? That's just exactly his word. You know, it makes me think uh, for some time before I know what it is. We talk a little bit, and then I was busy. I had to do something else, you know. So I, I cannot just uh, get back to her and say, What do you mean by rose butter and all that? So I said, Never mind, I, I figured it out. <laughs> and I did, you know. And then he said, Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, you know. <laughs> for example, like that, you know. So not just you communicate with animal, but you have to know how to interpret it. But that's just one of those of the things, you know. They they don't always uh, say it in uh, your term, eh? <laughs> they say it in their term, eh? Mm. Probably he forgot how to say honey, eh? Yeah. Or maybe in the bird language, you know, that's they call it rose butter. Yeah, I mean the best of the flower essence, you know. Rose is supposed to be the best flowers, ne? Eh? And the butter from them can only be honey, you know, and to the bees, probably that is their butter. Actually, it does look like butter also, no? Yeah, and if you don't take the, how you say, the, uh, the one they make candles, the wax, you know, sometimes out of it, it is really oily kind, you know? Like the, the Molokan, you know, the pink, pinky, a little bit pinky is uh, cockatoo. He said, well, before he was the top in the house, you know, the only one attention in the house. Then life took over, and then he became neglected. <laughs> he didn't blame the owner or nothing. He said, life, you know, life changed, you know, life took over. The course of life changed. Oh, he said, life took over. Can you believe that? Even our writer don't even say such things sometimes. <laughs> and we struggle to find such an expression if you want to be a writer, no? He just talked like that. Life took over, right? Beautiful, no? No life blaming took nothing. Over. Life took over. Yeah, life took over. No, no blaming nothing. I mean, why, why did he become like that and said, and he said, well, because before he was the most loved in the house, and then, you know, life took over and things changed and he became degraded into neglected pet. You know, in a pet shop, staying there all day long, <laughs> just to decorate the, the shop. Yeah. But he's already in a better shape than many other birds. You know? But what I mean is they use their language. It's very poetic, beautiful being. And we struggle to find some good sentence or some good word to punch, <laughs> punch the line. But they don't have to. They talk it just like poem. Beautiful. The journalists ask me what they like to eat, you know. They like all kinds. They even like pizza, spaghetti, <laughs> <laughs> and they love tofu. They eat it just raw tofu, you know, uh, white tofu, they love it. And they love all kinds of nuts 
all kind of seeds, yeah, which I give them different every day. And uh, dry fruit, you know, fresh fruit, vegetable, yeah, all kind of things. And if they don't like it, you know enough, they just leave it. <laughs> and you go and pick it up from the floor. <laughs> that means <laughs> don't give it again. Yeah. I always check, you know, take some time to to know what they know, what they like, but generally they like what birds like, you know, not fruit, natural food in the nature, you know, just the way they are. So, and also it's also easy to find a book to read about which kind of birds would like what kind of fruit, food, yeah? That's why I told them if you want to have a bird or a dog or an animal, you study first to see if you are capable of taking care of that one, yeah? And if they are compatible to your personality or environment. You see, some animal need big space, and if you have just a small studio, please don't take a Rottweiler in it. <laughs> some studio very small, it's like a bathroom, you know, <laughs> all together in kitchen and everything, you know. So you have to consider yourself, it's not like, I say it's not like just you have love for animals, that is not always enough, yeah? And sometimes it's enough, so, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to take in an animals in order to show that you have love for animals. If you cannot take, then don't take. That's also a kind of love. But what's the use of taking a bird or dogs in and you, you're not there for them all day or every day and neglect them and don't talk to them and not there for them? You understand me? They need love, they need interaction, they need affection. It's like you have a friend or family member. You have to interact with each other, you know, more or less every day. But they're normally very patient and understanding, you know. Even if you work all day and you come home at night, only that's enough for them. They'll come out right away and hello and oh, I love you and is it cold outside or all kind of things, you know. Yeah, if, if, the, if that's the way you talk, they talk like that. You don't even have to teach them. If the, you interact with each other every day, the family members say something, oh, isn't that cold every day? If you come in, put your coat there, oh, it's cold outside. And that's the way they will talk, is it cold outside? <laughs> you know? Or they learn it from television, you know, like one of my brothers, he talked like, it's cool, man, it's cool. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> talk like cowboys sometimes. It depends on what films you watch. <laughs> So I was very careful to not to expose her to any kind of TV, you know. So we just put a video, yeah. It would be nice if she has F- SMTV also, but sometimes it's not possible. So we put video, you know, kids' video, yeah, DVD, some nice stuff, you know, with birds, with dogs, with animals, with children. It's a nice, a romantic or nice thing, you know, not the violence and all that. And they love all that, they watch it. Not all of them watching. Sometimes they watch, sometimes they don't. My dogs, you know, some of them love TV. <laughs> the small one, he loves TV so much. Even if you open just a computer and he see the screen, something flashing, oh, he come nearby. <laughs> yeah. And the Rottweiler, goody, if he see you have anything apparatus in your hand, which look like a flashlight, then he come nearby waiting. <laughs> waking the whole body, waiting for you to to put the flashlight, you know, on the floor for him to chase. He loved to chase flashlights. So he loved to go out at night because at night we take them out for last time, you know. And uh, when you go on the street, sometimes no light, so they put the flashlight the guy on. He loved that. That's the best outing of the day. <laughs> Morning, lunch, dinner, it's not so interesting, but evening, you know. <laughs> Evening, about 10 o'clock, last time out, oh, he loves it because the flashlight is everywhere. Everybody has a flashlight, you know, and he chased from one after another. He loves it. <laughs> uh, you can use, uh, like, you know, laser light or something, anything, as long as it make a, a light point on it, a dark corner. Or if you don't have anything and the sun come and you put your hand, you know, make like a rabbit. <laughs> yeah, that he will chase that. Yeah. And if you don't do it, he keep looking at your hand. <laughs> yeah. And look at your hand and he look at the floor. Or he look at the flashlight and look at the floor. 
Sometimes he's impatient, he goes and push your hand, <laughs> push the flashlight, or take it from your hand, trying to push it in <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, every, every one of them have a, have a tick for something. Yeah. I told them that uh, every one of them have a gift, yeah? They really come to help mankind. Like the Bible said, I make you to befriend you and be your helpers. It's truly like that. Not every human can avail of this help. That's a pity, you know. Instead, they kill them. They come to help you, really. And the animals have helped me a lot. Some help me to get rid of bad guys. Yeah, bad disciples, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> yeah, because, like, for example, uh, Laguna, you know, the, the blue one, the blue bird, he doesn't like one guy in the house very much before, you know. And uh, he said, because that guy doesn't respect me. Yeah. So he, he didn't even tell me, he tell another psychic. <laughs> and because, you know, we, sometimes we can contact each other, so I know what she said to her. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to mention that name. Yeah. And uh, uh, the Rottweiler, for example, helped me to get rid of whoever who is not up to <laughs> his standard. <laughs> like if a person is a trouble causer, yeah, or not very sincere in the heart, or disrespectful to me in any way, or will bring trouble in the house, you know, bad karma, he somehow tried to get rid of that guy. Maybe he just scratched a little, <laughs> or maybe he make more trouble so that guy gets scared and go, or, or wake me up and check out the guy, why? <laughs> and then I check it out, and then also I let him go. For example, like that. Do you understand me? Uh, like many bring in nice people, friendly people, things like that, yeah. They all have something to do. And it's a pity that human doesn't avail themselves of the help of the animal. Even the wild one, you know, I said to them, I, I will produce another book called The Noble Wild, ne? It's almost finished, not finished yet, but almost finished. And I can't say all the things that I interact with, the, with them, with the wild one, just a little bit here and there, you know, because I also don't dare to say too much. Number one, these things are supposed to be discreet, yeah, between us. And, uh, but uh, sometimes inevitable, you know, I let uh, the readers know a little bit. When a situation arises that I have to tell, then I tell a little bit. But I cannot tell everything in one book. It needs to be like hundred books, at least, yeah? And ten books for each, you know? For example, a hundred books at least, if I want to tell everything, you know? But I'm not specialized in that, yeah? I just want people to love animals unconditionally. And then whatever develop between them, that will be good for them, just like me. I did not take in the animals with the intention to make more money or to have this psychic power, to, to telepathy with the bird animal. I didn't have it before, just because I love them so much. And then it become, it just became natural. And then things happen, and then I discover this, I discover that. And they tell me this, they tell me that, you know? I did not expect all this, honestly. It would be terrible for me to know all that in advance, you know? to hear all the cry of the animals and to hear all the things that they have to tell me, how they suffer and all that, that would be terrible for me. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But when you befriend them, they tell you nice things. And of course, when they are in your house or in your care, they are grateful and they're very happy to help you. Yeah, in any way they can. It depends on their capacity. Even a swan or a duck, you know, they help you. If you can contact them, of course. If not, they just work their way through it, work around it. Yeah. Uh, if they cannot tell you directly, then they make it just happen, just slower and more troublesome, and maybe you, because you don't know about it. That's all. Uh, you're not grateful about it because you don't know anything. But they still do it. They do the best they can to help your life better. If you can hear them, it's fantastic because they can see everything. Some, like the swan, he can see, wow, about 5,000 years backward. Something saved me a lot of time. 
I don't have to go to the second uh, you know, level to check out in the bibliotheque, yeah, in the library. Yeah. She just tell me straight if something I need to know about somebody. I don't have to go check. She go check for me. Like a flash. I don't have to wait for next time. I call you back in <laughs> an hour. <laughs> no, no, no. Immediate. Yeah. For example, like that. You know, they are tr- tremendous help to mankind. It's a very pity that people don't know about it. Just go on killing them. You kill your helper. You could have let them live and use them and de- develop even your own telepathy. In a while, if you really love an animal, you will contact. And then through that contact, you can contact other animals as well. You understand me? Without my animal, I wouldn't be able to use the telepathy. Do you understand? On the physical level, no. Because I'm gone too high and I, I cannot use it. I don't use it. But because of this connection, it's like I have an extra outlet, you know? <laughs> so they, they, then I can use it as well. Do you understand this? Yeah, because of them. They help me. They help me to be able to use this faculty in this physical world while I'm on a higher dimension. So I have both, you know? I'm forever grateful. But that comes after me. I did not know that before. I have to tell you honestly. Because I, I love Max blind, you know? I just love them and take them home, that's it. Because they're helpless. Yeah, that's what I think. But actually now I think humans are more helpless than them. We need help, not them. We need help to develop compassion and to make use of the help that the animal will give us if we love them and contact them. It's really a pity. They are like the physical angel for humankind. You understand how some people always pray to the angel for help in some situation? We have angels running all over the planet in the form of all kinds of animals. They are the angels in the physical form to help you in different situ- situations. Well, you know it yourself. For example, we watch on SMTV, there was a dog, a stranger dog, a stray dog from nowhere, the name Hero, remember? And there was a woman who has an a accident and lay on the roadside, and he just come and pack her, you know, drag her to the, the highway, edge of the highway, so that everybody can see her. You know that. And you're a stranger from nowhere. If it's not an angel, what is it then? Huh? They know everything because they are very psychic. They're very more inside. They are not too much outward seeking like us. That's why. Oh, they eat a little bit and they're satisfied. It's finished. They rely absolutely on divine for protection and food. So they're always in contact with the divine. They are truly angels, protectors of human. Just human don't know. It's very pity because the low consciousness of the, the people of this planet, that's what happened. Ah, it's, it's a shame. It's really a shame. So humans really are the ones who need help, need help to wake up, need help to know every other being are also very special and sometimes better than us in some way. Need help to develop compassion, need help to recognize that we need help. Yeah, just uh, I don't know whom I'm talking to right now, maybe to the wall. <laughs> I've been talking all these years, how many people listen. Yeah. It doesn't really matter to the animals, you know, because for them, okay, if they have to die, they die. Uh, their lives are short, most of them anyway. It's just that uh, if we kill them, you know, we have karma, yeah? And we uh, lose ourselves of one of the very great benefits. They don't lose nothing. You kill them, they go back to where they belong. Everyone has one life anyway, and the animal, they go straight to heaven. If you don't let them help, then they go home. So they don't lose nothing, it's just the one who kill them will lose. Yeah, lose the merit, lose heart, lose compassion, lose a great part of love and lose a great part of help that God has sent here for us. Yes, in the Bible it says that I create animals to befriend you and to be your helpers. It is truly like that. How come nobody listens? 
so many Christians, how come nobody realized this? Isn't that amazing? Huh? They read the Bible every day, nobody realized it. What did God say? God said, any more here to help you, find out what they can help. No, eat them before they can even help kill them already. Do you understand me? How come people are so oblivious to such an, you know, a very obvious truth which is stated in the Bible? The first page even, no? Almost. <laughs> you know, one of the first pages about creation. Yeah. The Old Testament. Huh? It's incredible. Yeah. I think definitely human needs help, not animal needs help. Of course, they would not like to die you know, like everyone else, because they, they have a job to do here. But if they die, they die, they lose nothing. Physical life don't mean that big deal to them, because they always contact with the Divine. Before somebody kills them, they know it already. They know everything in advance. They can see past and future, just like I'm reading a book. Yeah, sometimes my bird, because I'm busy, I don't always sit there and look into the crystal, you know, a <laughs> crystal ball, and I don't care that much about those things. I'm going about with my business, you know, so busy. So my bird has to remind me that something will happen. You understand me? Or even the wild, <laughs> they tell me. Yeah. Sometimes if I'm too busy to listen in daytime, they come at night time. <laughs> when I sit or meditate or more quiet and nobody bug me, nobody asks my attention, then they tell me. Yeah. Because these things are not like not like spiritual practice or anything, you know what I mean? So my job is just to teach people spiritual practice and not to sit there and, and look into the past and future of anybody. You know, I don't know it's into people's business. But they are there to help me, you know. So I have excuses to know. <laughs> Otherwise, I would not check out. You see what I mean? Yeah. So the animals are tremendous help to mankind. I just hope that one day the human truly capish this and make use of their valuable resource that God has sent onto this planet for us. Okay. <laughs> Any question at all? I mean, any question about this retreat, spiritual practice, anything at all, you know? Mm. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, how come a uh, human can arise at this state to be uh, obvious and. Uh, to be? To be obvious and don't understand uh, oh. such a thing. How come, huh? Uh-huh. Too busy, baby. Too busy. Hmm? too busy uh, amassing wealth and money and position, worry about tomorrow too much, and don't take care of the present. Don't have a present mind. Even sometimes here, you make me a cup of tea, you put all kind of garbage in it. You're thinking, I, <laughs> I want to drink and then <laughs> I spit it out. Do you understand? No present minded. Yeah. Uh, do one thing and think of a thousand other things. Yeah? Just make one cup of tea, cannot even concentrate on it. Make it too bitter, too sweet, too pain, too plain, too pale, whatever. Never correct. That's one of the reasons at home I, I cook for myself, even I make my own tea. I don't want to get uh, vexed over a cup of tea, you know? I don't want to trouble people. Can't even concentrate for two seconds just to make tea. And takes so long sometimes to make a cup of tea, I don't know why. And when it's made, I can't even drink it. Too much garbage in it, you know? Invisible garbage. If you think you wash your clothes and you wash your body every day, you are clean. No, you're not. Wash here, huh? The, the, the monkey mind. Otherwise, when you offer something good, it's not good. Like when you cook. People eat and they don't feel good, they don't feel satisfied, they don't feel happy, or they don't feel elevated, maybe they feel depressed even, or they feel angry because of your food, but you put anger in it, yeah? Or you put depression in it. 
or you think of something unpleasant while you're cooking. You know, instead of, you know, concentrate, recite the God's name, or whoever name you believe in, you know, Jesus, Buddha, whoever, if you don't have any master, recite holy names that you know, and cook the food, or make the tea, or do anything else in your life. That will make the world a better place, yeah? And your food better, and whatever you offer to people, it will benefit them. It's not just material things. If you're not pure in your heart, even when you're cooking, you poison people. I'm sorry to say that. You don't have to put, uh, you know, rats or poison or anything in it. You can poison people with thinking. And that's how the witchcraft exists, you know? That's how people can kill people from far away, remote, because of the mind, the power of the mind. So if we think positive, things become positive. Yeah, if we think negative, things become negative. You know that already by the Japanese uh, experience with the water. Yeah, I no need to go into detail. So just uh, recite the holy names. Yeah, even for outsider, if they don't know us, you just tell them recite the Christ's name, Buddha's name. St. Peter's, uh, whomever they think is their patron, they recite the holy name of God, or of the saints, and then that will be better for their environment, their food, their life, their soul, their heart, their happiness, everything. Okay? It's better than uh, thinking garbage all the time. But it's difficult to control the mind, eh? Difficult. That's why I told you, come here, you bring garbage sometimes, not just good, but you are trying hard. You're trying hard, and I appreciate that. I appreciate your trying, yeah? You can only try, right? <laughs> what else can you do, okay? So even if sometimes I remonstrate you or tell you something, that's just to train you, yeah, to remind you. I'm not angry with you ever, understand me? Whatever I tell you or treat you, not because of angry hatred, no, no. It's for you good, for you to train yourself, to wake up. Just like when somebody fainted or something, you know, uh, collapsed, some people sometimes press them hard, very hard, with some point object, you know, to make them painful. Then they wake up or throw the ice bucket on, on their face. Not because that person hates them, yeah? The action may look very hateful, no? Very brutal, huh? People already lay dead, half dead there, and then you throw the whole ice bucket on their face. What kind of love is that? No? But it helps. That person wakes up. Is that not so? That's the, the, one of the emergency treatment, no? I mean, I don't advise you to do that if you don't know which is what. But that's what people do, right? No? Do you know that or not? Or they hit them in the face, yeah. To wake up, wake them up. Yeah, and hit hard sometimes, it's painful. But it won't hurt them, you know, I mean, maybe red, swollen, liver, but they don't die. Yeah. Or pinch them, you know? And it seems a very cruel thing to do, to hit a person when he's already sick and half dead. My God, what kind of people? But that's the right thing to do. Actually, it's like that. So not always the soft treatment is good, yeah? It has to have love inside. And then the treatment you do correctly and it's, it's okay, yeah? You know, like somebody sometimes cannot breathe, you know? And what the doctor do? Get some hard iron plate, something, press on their chest and punching them, huh? Punching up and down, up and down. It doesn't look like a very compassionate gesture, no? <laughs> People already pain, cannot breathe, and he keep pushing him, huh? Like, look like beating his chest, you know? Hard, you know, very hard. But that's the way it, it is, no? You understand? Yeah. Or if somebody swallows something and cannot breathe, yeah? What do you do? Family maneuver, okay? You squeeze him very hard. My God, it doesn't sound a very good gesture to do, no? Squeezing people like that, you know? But then it helps. The things will be spit out. Yeah. So it's not, not like just always, you know, uh, uh, sweet, gentle, and kindness. I love. It's not like that. You know? Just like sometimes at home you teach your children, you know, right? Sometimes you have to remonstrate them and say, No, that's no good, not acceptable. Yeah? You don't always say, Honey, lovely, good, go, go ahead and kick the other neighbors, the son. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I always love you. You're always the best. 
You understand that? Huh? If he kicks a neighbor's son, you remonstrate him. Yeah? Or maybe you even spank his bottom. Not to hurt, but to let him know this is a not a good thing to do. Otherwise, he grow up, he become gangster, no? Beating people and then become a habit. You understand me? Yeah. Or if he stole something from somebody, then you, you scold him. You say, no, that is not a good behavior. Return it. Yeah? You cannot always say, oh, good honey, bring something home. Why? Bring some more. No? That is not love. You see? So it depends on the situation. And it depends on your motive inside your heart. It's not only the action, I tell you. Yeah? Okay? Right. Any other question? Any question at all? Hmm? You must have a lot of questions and you're just shy, right? Wait until I come home and say, Jeez, I should have asked her. <laughs> no? Uh, yeah. I'd like to ask, is it mainly the birds that can tell the future and the past, or dogs and cats? Dogs can also. Dogs or animals can. Most animals can. Yeah. But it depends on your connection with them, they tell you more or less, ne? Uh, even, but between, even between birds, some can tell more, some can tell less. It's not like everybody do the same. No, no, no. It's not like that. Some birds can see only up to 2,000 years backward, or 2,000 years forward. <laughs> uh, the general, you know, general, yeah. But some can see four, five thousand, ten thousand years backward. Well, more than that, we don't need to know. Not that they don't know, but it's not necessary to dig out things about a few million years ago, you, you like. I mean, we had enough to do every day already, no? Just a few a million seconds ago, you already had enough work to do. If you dig another few million years, this is a headache. Then we leave it to the archaeologists, no? Yeah. But uh, some, some can tell you everything you want to know. Just a what for, okay? I only know what I need to know. I don't have time to even sit there and listen. <laughs> if it's not necessary, I, I, don't, I don't even ask them, and we don't talk all the time, no. Just love is enough. They come up to my hand, pet, pet, are you okay? Give a nut, some seeds, you know? Their favorite treats. Sometimes like, they like dry fruit, like dry papaya, without sugar, eh? The natural. Uh, dry, uh, even dry uh, yams, you know, sweet potatoes, dry mango, dry apple, yeah. But uh, mostly I feed them uh, uh, um, fresh fruit, yeah. Sometimes out of season, uh, like dates we don't have, so we give them the dry dates, for example, or dry, uh, how you say, figs. They also like that, yeah. Just like us, sometimes we eat fresh fruit, but we also like to munch on some dry substance, you know, <laughs> like raisins, yeah, coconut, yeah. And they like coconut also, yeah, fresh or dry, yeah, for example, like that. And they like banana, but not every bird like banana, you see? So each one is different. We have to see which one like what. You can read in the book, see what's their favorite food, their natural food, or you learn it slowly. Mostly they would eat seeds and fruit anyway, yeah? Or they have some ready-made pellets, you can fit it to them. Mm, uh, but I give them all kinds of things, you know. Just intuitively I know what they like. Yeah. Some bird who came from poor background, like Sunny, he loved banana. He couldn't eat uh, one whole banana by himself. Because that's cheap food, and they, that's what they fed him since he was a child. So he loved that. If I, I have a banana, he go berserk. He go running all over, wanting it. Yeah. But most of them, poor or rich, they love peanuts. <laughs> you know, the whole peanut, raw peanut, yeah. Or roasted peanut, no salt, yeah. The whole one with the shell, they like better. And I also crack a little bit of almonds with shells, or walnut, or chestnuts, or those kind, crack, crush a little bit, and then they, they crunch the rest, and they like it very much. They like to open their own... Their own uh, not just like outside, eh? but because it, I don't know, it's too hard, sometimes I crush a little bit first. And they still can, they still can open it by themselves and crunch it, crack, crack, they like that very much. Yeah, they have all kinds of things in my house. They don't like anything, every day different. Eh? And they have their playroom that 
I uh, built for them. So winter even, they can go out in the sun, you know, not too windy, yeah? Because uh, sometimes uh, in the open it's not always good, you know? The breeze and wind and things fly into their eyes, they're not used to in the wild, you see what I mean? So I make window and <laughs> but the big, big room and all transparent, you know? So they can see the sky, they can see everywhere, just like without a room, yeah. And at night they go and sleep in the cage. Cage is also good for them, because the cage is comprised of, you know, fence lights, material, and they like to climb all over. And like Rainbow, he loves to hang on the ceiling, so you need to have <laughs> a cage with like fence, you know? But the painted fence, not, not the zinc, yeah? The one without zinc. Zinc is poisonous for them. You know, those they use for chicken fence, it's no good. So you have to use 31 so that they don't eat it up also, because they can bend wire, you know, and lock themselves in or bend it and open it and get out. <laughs> so it had to be sturdy. And they love to climb all over, you know, like exercise. Like they used to climb trees, you know, yeah? The trees are not always clean, they're not used to. You understand me? So it's good to have something for them to climb all over. But when they go out to play, the, the whole room that I built is big. They could fly in it and they see everything, you know? Sometimes I let them climb trees also, it depends. Yeah, if the tree is clean. Because sometimes not clean, you know? Have some mushroom or something, they eat it, it could be poisonous for them. And something, some trees are poison for the birds and the dogs as well. So it's a lot of work, I'm telling you. A lot of research before you bring an animal friend home, yeah? If in the wild, of course, you're not responsible, yeah? but in your hand. Because these pets, they're born in captivity, they're used to it already. They don't have maybe not that much immune system, you know, and not the natural surrounding, you see? Uh, and the bird, they fly high, you know? They don't get contaminated so much. But even then, you see the bird flu and everything. Yeah. So right now, I don't dare let them come out even in the tree, just inside the classroom, big classroom. A lot of rope, you know, <laughs> they climb all over, yeah, they interact with each other, yeah. And then uh, at night, of course, they go in the cage to sleep, yeah. Change water often, food three, four times a day. Uh, three times a day is the main, you know, but in between I sometimes pass by, give them, them some peanuts, almonds or something to crack, you know, to have fun. Yeah, and we change toys for them and soft bed underneath, because they like to lay under on the floor of the, the cage. And uh, uh, up, you know, in the air, and uh, they hold their tails, you know. <laughs> For example, they lay on the floor like this, you know, lay on the back like human, and they hold their tail up and talking, <laughs> talking to the tail. Hello, I love you and you are cool, all that stuff. And are you happy? Ha 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 Yeah, if you don't have time to play with them, they also play with themselves and with each other. Nah? This is very cute though. Hmm. But they do know the difference between the caretaker and the so-called owner, yeah? So when I came in, they react different, I'm gone berserk. The caretaker come in every day, give them food and clean. Oh, it's okay. Come or go. All right, fine. <laughs> they know the difference. Dogs also. Dogs also. They know everything. They know who is the master of the house. That's it. You know, who is the leader of the group? Because they are groupy type of of animal. You know, pack. They are packed and they flock. Yeah. So they need a leader, strong one. So they know that they be guided, taken care of, and protected. They are also like human, you know? They, are, they can help you, but they are not invincible. You understand me? Dogs also can succumb to disease or infection. Birds the same. So we go in the bird's room, we don't talk direct into their mouth, for example. Huh? And sometimes, after I clean my teeth and rinse very well, then we kiss kiss a little, yeah? Otherwise, mostly we wear masks, yeah? Yeah. Especially the caretaker, I don't know if their mouth is clean enough, so all wear masks and use a glove to take care of them. So in case if they're sick and they're not known, they don't transmit to the birds, because the birds are very sensitive, more sensitive than dogs. Mostly they fly in the sky, 
they would not get a contamination. Dogs, they are, have immune system stronger than birds. Birds don't need. So if they are in your house, you have to take care of them very well, because we humans have sometimes germs and bacteria that they cannot, uh, you know, get used to. Just, just on the safe side. Most of people, they don't care that much. It's just in my house, I care. I can only care about my birds. I cannot care for everybody. I cannot tell everybody what to do. Only in my house. So if you take care like that, your birds will be very healthy, and very rare you have to take them to the doctor. Do you understand me? Only for check up now and again. But mostly if they're healthy, you can tell. Yeah, jumping around, happy, quacking, <laughs> talking all day. <laughs> Watch TV and say, "Oh, very good, very good." <laughs> Yeah, they watch TV and give comments, you know, <laughs> like us. Eh? Mm. And some of them can clap hands and all that, you know. If they can hang themselves on somewhere with the beak, and they can do clapping hands, yeah. Especially Rainbow, he loves to hang. There are some kind of parrots called hanging parrots. He's not one of them. He's not in the family of hanging parrots, but he loves to hang so much. And he teach everybody in my house how to hang. <laughs> so sometimes you go in the room, so everybody hang on the ceiling, <laughs> like the rat, the bat, you know, all of them hanging <laughs> and talking with each other. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so therefore, my bird need to have cage, yeah, so that so the time they are not in the playing house, they can hang. They love to hang with each other. Yeah, it's just no big deal. And outside, uh, because the the bird room is very big, so they sometimes run around or fly around a little. You know, depends on who likes to fly or not. Some lazy don't fly. You think flying is look fun and romantic? To them, it's work, man. <laughs> just like we had to run. You know? Can you imagine running all day or running every day or long hour? It's just it's not uh, like. Uh, Easy thing, you know. It's nice to fly, but sometimes windy and you know, dirt come into your eyes or go against your wing. It's not always fun. But the birds like they get used to it. Yeah, my birds, some of them very lazy. I tell them fly, they don't fly. And they just fly a little bit to the floor and then climb back up again and quack quack quack. <laughs> yeah, but some like to fly, but. They know they don't need to, so they don't fly. Even if they fly, they fly a little bit and then just stop somewhere and go back, crawling back by hand, you know, uh, by feet, and then quacking. Yeah. They just love to hang around me. They don't fly nowhere. <laughs> it's a problem. You know, I sometimes I throw far away so that he flies. You know, he don't fly. He come back, walking back, you know, and climb onto him from my shoes, climb it up. <laughs> you know, they can uh, grip by their mouth. From the shoe, they climb up. Nothing you can do about it. <laughs> it's easy to tell them come up because they always like to come up to your arm. But now, mm, let me think about it. <laughs> they cling to you, you know. It's difficult, but you can train them. It's, uh, after a while, they come down. Say, okay, get down, man. Be good. And then they come down reluctantly, but come down. And after that, I say, good boy, good coming down. That's smart boy. So that's how you train them. You see. They know what pleases you, and then they do it. They train them after a while. But you have to love them, then everything comes smoothly, just automatic. Hmm? Or they, you put them upside down, you know, on, on, your, on your... Normally the bird, they don't lay on their back like that, not in nature, that's not their nature. But because I trained them since a kid, you know, or since they came, so they also love to lay on the, on the back, you know. That's why I have to put soft wood on the floor, and we clean it all day. Every time, you know, we clean it three, four, five times a day of the pool. But because the wood, they also fold it in quickly, so it dry. And they love to lay on the back and playing with the tail, or looking at their finger, <laughs> oh, yeah, things like that. Yeah, because I used to let them lay on my hand or lay on my lap, you know, and talk to them direct like this, you know, hey you, <laughs> and then playing kung fu with them a little bit, yeah, <laughs> with the you know boxing, yeah. Sunny like boxing, yeah, and Rainy like to hang, and Rainbow like to hang on my uh, shoulder or my sleeve, and then I have to swing him around. He loves that. 
and the faster the better. He don't get dizzy. No, he loves it. <laughs> Everyone's different, you know? Yes. And Laguna, he, she loves to lay on the back, you know, and grabbing me around and talking nonsense, you know? <laughs> lay on my lap, she likes that. Everyone is different, okay? After a while, you get used to each other. You know exactly what the birds want, and the world know what you want. So when I begin to turn off the light two, three times, I let them prepare. You know, I don't turn off the light, come out right away. I turn three times. Off, and then on again for a while. Let them, I say, get ready, guys. And then they all climb to the perch, you know, because after a while it will be too dark, you know. And then after they are up, and then I turn the light on, off again three times to let them know it's time to sleep. And then they all climbing up, and the other birds start singing, nai, 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 oh, la, 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 la. Because that's how I sing when uh, I say good night to them, you know? Yeah. So they know everything. <laughs> if I forget to say nai, nai, they say it for me. Nai, nai. <laughs> and if my attendant don't say yes quick enough, they say it. One of the, the African greys especially, he talks just like me. Exactly, so everybody gets full thinking I'm calling all the time. <laughs> and then she has a good laugh. <laughs> and she tells the dogs off all the Benny, shut up! <laughs> Suddenly also, when he, the dog too noisy, he says, Shut up! <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when I say, when I say to, sometimes short, you know, shut up. <laughs> but if it takes too long and too noisy, we say, shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> and sometimes I say things to the attendant, you know, the assistant, and they busy or they don't hear or they didn't reply quick enough. Then the African Grey immediately say, yes, master. <laughs> Always, yes. Yes, Master. <laughs> you don't believe it, do you? It's the truth. You, you can ask any of my uh, former assistants, they all know that. Yeah. Sometimes say it in a boy's voice, sometimes say it in a man's voice, because I have both, you know, assistant, man and a woman. So sometimes, Yes, Master. <laughs> sometimes, Yes, Master. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to call one of the assistants, you know, like, Stephen. And then the person answered, yes, you know. So sometimes she do it both, you know. She say, Stephen, in my, in my voice. And then, yes. <laughs> she answered herself, Stephen. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes, and she can imitate all birds in there. So sometimes she says something, I thought it was some other bird. You know, the way they sing or the way they talk. Uh, and she imitates ducks and all that, exactly the same. My God, what a talent! You know, it's not like an imitation, it's a real voice. And if she says like a duck, she says, quack, quack. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> it's not, not, not like us, imitation, quack, quack, you know. I really say the voice. And imitate any of the assistants the same. Same same voice, exactly same voice. Exactly same like my voice. I love you, Prasna. She say like that. Her her, her name. Huh? Yeah. Nai nai. <laughs> exactly like my voice. And sing la 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 la. You know, because I sing and after a while I la la la, you know. So she loved that. Yeah. Before I go out of the room she always la 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 la. <laughs> And if I come in late at night, because I come in at night sometimes, several times, to check the temperature, you know? Because sometimes the temperature outside drops so quick. And sometimes if I put the heater now, but later it may be too hot, so I check several times, you know? And uh, if I come in late, you know, any time, she say, yoo -hoo! Hello! You know, yoo -hoo! <laughs> And sometimes the dog is the next door room, and sometimes they talk in a dream, you know? My son is, Hello. <laughs> Hello, boy. <laughs> and then the dogs are thinking somebody coming and start barking. <laughs> it's not fun like you are laughing now. Sometimes I have to do something or meditate, and the bird suddenly, Hello. <laughs> 
and all the birds, good boy, you know, they're thinking of the daytime or something and dream about it. Or dream in their own world, I don't know, and then hello or say something, and then the dogs start barking, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and if the ten, bark, ten dog bark together, you don't think it's funny, do you? Especially that big one. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> very, very, uh, very loud. You can hear them from, uh, from the end of the town. He's a big one, you know? And he used to be guard dog, so anything he guard, you know? He, he don't sleep that much. <laughs> and he look very mean. <laughs> but he's sweet, he's sweet. <laughs> and so loud. So, so now I, I, I leave them separately, you know? It's two dogs, you know, in one room. <laughs> so even if they bark, you know, it's not that big to get like an orchestra. <laughs> Besides, if one doesn't bark, the other doesn't. It's just sometimes just one barking, and everybody else thinks they have to also do the duty, you know, protecting each other and a pack, you know, so they all bark together. Same with the bird. If one says something, and they all say something very loud together. Especially if I'm on the phone, they also want to say, "Who is that Who's talking?" Because I can hear the other person in the line. You know, their ear very sensitive. Same, my dog. If if I phone, I have to go out of the dog's room. Or uh, if uh, the phone rings, I have to get out of the bedroom. You can hear nothing in there, from you know all the quacking and the barking. You hear nothing absolutely. <laughs> They just want to say hello also to the other person, but ten dogs say hello together non-stop. How you hear it? You know, a dozen of birds hello together. Truly, they like that. They're very sociable, you know? So if you're talking, they also want to talk. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay. Well, it's funny now, but when I'm working and try to listen to something, it's not all that funny, I have to tell you. So the bird would say, shut up! <laughs> but their noise also noisier than dogs. Together, even if she says, shut up, shut up, you know, and the dog barking, no, it doesn't help me at all, <laughs> because the dogs don't listen to them. <laughs> it just make more noise. All right. Any, uh, any more question? Something? Yeah. How about cats? Uh, talk about cats. They also, they also can talk. Yes, yes. I just don't have cats in my house at the moment. I had before. So I don't talk about it, that's all, okay? It's symbolic, you know. I can't talk about all the animals. I will write thousands of books, you know, <laughs> and you have no time to come here and do retreat with me. Yeah, to write a few books, and very simple and, and short, it still very take a lot of time. First, I have to sort out the photographs, if I have. If I don't have, I have to take photographs myself. See, now for the wild one, mostly it's my photograph. <laughs> I, I interact with them every day, I feed them, so I just take a small camera and in case anything funny. <laughs> yeah, so, and then after that you have to sort out which one is a good photo, which is not, you know, because I'm not the very professional. <laughs> and sometimes they move too fast, I don't get it, you know. So the photograph is not good, I have to uh, sort it out and, you know, do it in a organized way, and then have to write a story behind it, etc., etc., yeah, or convey the message. It takes a lot of work now. Besides of all the work I have already, I only do a little bit at a time, sometimes in the night only. Uh, when there's some lucky day I don't have a lot of work, then I do some of that. Daytime, no, no chance. You can't even think in my house, you can't think. Because <laughs> dog barking, you know, and a kissing and a bird wanting and grabbing and all kind of things and human coming, complaining or working or uh, yeah, SMTV sending stuff, <laughs> uh, FG sends stuff, news group sends stuff, uh, you know, complaining here, helping there, all kind of things. Daytime, no chance for me. You know, many times I eat only once a day because I don't even have chance to eat breakfast. Pack it all, either maybe one sandwich. You know, and that's supposed to be breakfast, but because I eat so late, so it doesn't matter, it becomes brandy. <laughs> and then uh, until the next day. Yeah, I, I don't mind that, I don't mind that, as long as I'm healthy, you know. Sometimes uh, I don't feel eating a lot make you either healthy either. Or whatever, you know, whatever, I don't worry too much about food anymore. 
I'd be glad if I don't have to eat. But it's my destiny, I have to eat. So whatever, yeah? <laughs> Minimum. Any more question? You have cat, right? No, I don't have, but there's lots of story about cats. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, they get lost about more than 2,000 kilometers and they find a way back. Yes, home. of course. They, I told you, animals, they all know. I said before, all animals have telepathic talents and they also know everything. Yeah? More or less, some are different, some are less, some are more, but they do have capability beyond your imagination. Dogs or cats, if they get lost, they can get back any time. But take them time, but sometime between they get killed, that's all. But they all would go back. If, if they're alive, they come back. Just sometimes it doesn't happen, they cannot come back. You know, they die in between. So we didn't know that the dog come back, they come back. Even you move house, they would trace you down. <laughs> and find you. Many stories like that. It's all true. It's all true. They are not dogs. They will look like you and I in their real form, just more glorious, light and bright and beautiful. Yeah? More beautiful. Yeah? Their real form is like us. Yeah? Like, like all of our real form. Very glorious, beautiful, magnificent. So they just take that form only, physically, in a box. You know what I mean? Different present, uh, wrapped in different box. Yeah. You can take a diamond and put it in a small hanky, or you can put it in a beautiful box, or you could put a lot more paper and decorate around in a bigger box. It's the same piece of diamond. <laughs> okay? Similar to us. Yeah. That's what people don't realize. Okay? Yeah. Any more question, Okay. I wanted to ask you, Master, do they miss you when you are not with them? They do. They do. Very much. Just like you miss me. <laughs> but uh, at least we can talk inside, you know. And they know I'll be back soon. Some cannot bear it, you know. But now they're better. Before, when they, were, uh, when they first came to me, we're not so used to with each other so much, and they have been uh, traumatized before, you know. So somehow um, they lost the uh, ability to withstand, but now they, they're strong now. They know I come and go, come and go. I tell them before I go, I say, I have to go, okay, guys, for a while. I have to do my job, you know that, huh? I come back, I'll huh? be good boy, be good girl. You do this, you take care of the living room, the other guy take care of the garage, that guy take care of the kitchen, and that take care of nobody pee in the house. And <laughs> <laughs> and you make sure everybody is safe before, you know, until I come back, you know. And you make sure everybody eat well. I just assign them some work to do, make them busy. <laughs> and they feel important. Yes, I take care of the living room. <laughs> or I take care of the attendants, you know, the assistants. Yeah, yeah it's okay. And uh, we're cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, most of birds are dogs, they're very patient, very understanding. It's just only one, one bird was too sensitive and got sick when I left. That was a long time ago when I first got her. Now she's okay. Now she's okay. And they're happy, very happy. Of course they are not happy when I'm not here, not there that much, but they, they know that it's okay. Very understand, very understand. Any more questions? Can the the dogs and the birds, can they talk between them? Yeah, they do. They do. They, they do. Each, they know each other very well. Animals, they can communicate with each other, no problem. But you'd be surprised, sometimes they communicate within their own race more. Like Rottweiler would communicate to that black guy, <laughs> and not much with a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> they get on better between the black, yeah, <laughs> and the blonde get on more with the blonde, yeah. So we do have black and white stuff. <laughs> but although they they okay with each other though, <laughs> it's just I found out that they get on with their own type better. That's all. But doesn't mean that they hate the other type or anything. They just communicate more. Okay? Yeah. What? Can we reincarnate into an animal just for pleasure? I don't think you like that, <laughs> but can, can. If you're on high level, you can incarnate in any form. I told you the cow are from very high order. They incarnate here as a cow on purpose, just to help mankind. 
to understand. Before they wanted to go down, help with agriculture, you know, and help to feed some of the babies who the mother doesn't have milk. That's what their purpose. But then the human eat them as well, and just uh, breed them out at random, you know, without a real purpose in it. And that that is all wrong. They came to help only, yeah. Two interspecies, completely different. One is a cow, one is a human. Do you understand me? Yes, it's, it's very incredible. The cow is a great help to mankind, from agriculture to every other thing, to beasts of burden, and the second mother to babies. They are very good. We should never eat them. It's a horrible crime to do, but they always forgive us. That's one good thing. The cows always forgive humans. Okay, what, what next? The only thing, the thing that pleases God best is your ego gone. That's it, the hardest part that you don't ever do. That's difficult for you to do is to kill your ego, that's it. After you kill your ego, there's nothing to do anymore. God will be pleased anyway, because you will do always the right thing. Okay? Next one. Yeah. Do we have a, when we have a dog? Is there often a past life connection with that dog, or is it not always the case? Not always the case. But if it's a past life connection, it's a nicer. Yeah, you know it. Yeah. They tell you. <laughs> Any more question? Anyone? Come, tell me. I mean, when they come here, the animal they know already is a big sacrifice. Yes, yes. So they, they know already. They know. They know. Yeah. They know, but they do their part. Yes. It's just like when uh, sometimes we go to help a disaster area, maybe you're risking, you know? But you do it, huh? Yeah. Uh, all right, what else? If the animals meditated with us, uh, their level will be uh, elevated. Your level will be elevated. <laughs> <laughs> I have a vegetarian cat since seven, uh, seven years. Yes. And uh, every time when I meditate, uh, he is beside or he meditates on my legs. Yeah. That's why I, uh, I, I wonder if uh, he medit uh, meditates with me. Mm, he does. Uh, it's good for him. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Okay. <laughs> what next? It's not really a question, but a few weeks ago we interviewed a lady who communicate with animals? Yes, that's possible. She was uh, saying that animals really understand the spirit world much more than humans. Yes, definitely. I told you, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, it's the way it is, because they're more inward than us. We are too materialistic. That's why we forgot our spiritual self. They are not, you see? They live from day to day, whatever they have, they eat. Have you ever heard a dog, you know, or see a dog who asks for luxury, uh, food or, <laughs> or more comfortable bed. No, they don't care that. Whatever you give them, they eat. That's the point. Yeah? Because they're absolutely relying on God, yeah, on the providence. They're always in contact with the Divine. That's why they know so much. They're all pervading knowledge, you see? We only concentrate on books, you know, like what I'm doing now, <laughs> learning from books, <laughs> yeah learning from printed word, learning from uh, experience of other people about how to survive in this world, or how to add two and two, make four. And they don't need all that. They know everything. But it's a pity, I told you this morning, that's correct, that she knows it. It's a pity a human doesn't avail themselves for this uh, great knowledge of animals. They come here really to help. We can tune in with them. They tell you all kinds of things so it's beneficial to you. They even warn you of danger. They warn you of bad person. They tell you who is good for you, who is bad for you. They tell you who is higher level, who is low. Yes, they know everything. They can tell you the whole history of that person, 10,000 years back, <laughs> and so on. Yes, so that you know the relation between you and that person. You understand? And why things happen the way it happened. They explain it to you. Okay, last life, he did that to you. This life, he's going to do that, the same, but similar, but different. Like last life, he make you 
enslaved and, uh, and, and, and driving the camels, you know, through the, 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 the desert and delivering milk. Uh, this lifetime, yeah, he make you drive truck, <laughs> milk truck, <laughs> and uh, pay very little or abusing you. It's a similar situation. You understand? Just maybe better this time because he had vowed to come back to, to uh, make up for what he done last time. So maybe he treat you better this time. But still, there is some trace you can see why he did that and he did this to you. Because sometimes he slipped, he forgot, and the karma is so strong, make him do wrong things again to you. And the animal knows all that. They explain everything if you, if you can communicate with them. Rarely an animal complain of anything unless you ask them, you know. For example, one uh, psychic um, animal uh, communicator, you know, her name is something Fizero. She lives in Texas. You know? She's on TV all the time. You know that? Okay. Well, the owner asked her why her dog is sick. Yeah. So she, the dog tells her that because the chemical they use in the house, every day in the hour they use any chemical to wipe the floor and wipe the wall and all that. That make him sick because he cannot bear it. So the psychic communicator to animal tell her don't use chemical anymore. It's you, uh, you know, vinegar solution the way I have taught you. And then the the dog immediately uh, put his paw out and shake hand with the psychic right on the camera. And it's not like a trained dog or you know like they know each other nothing. And he was you know kind of nodding and shaking her hand. Everybody was so touched. I happened to saw, see that show, you know, when I was in America sometime. I see it somewhere. I don't know where. I don't remember. Yes, it's truly like that. The, the communicator to animal, they really can do that. Dr. Doolittle, do exist. Yeah, and do a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. What else? Now, you can also share with me. You don't have to ask questions. Anything. He also said that of course yeah of course of course and they also sometimes they die because of the of the uh, you know pollution they know it they are in the sea you know most of the things go to the sea and they are in the uh, cold area as well as the hot area they know the ice are melting in the alarming rates you know People can go now to the North Pole and, and deep in there, swim in there already. Uh, last uh, week I saw some TV that a lot of people who go there strip naked, so just to show that the environment really changed and the, the, the climate really changed and that the North Pole is not as cold as before anymore. One guy who swim there, just to, to prove it as well, swim completely just with a bikini. I mean, he, he, he wear a man bikini. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you call that. It's not a bikini, is it? Swim trunk. Swim trunk, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that is really a bikini, huh? Mini bikini. <laughs> he didn't need that much, yeah, okay. So, what else is there? What else did she say? It just really amazed me that the animals were more, much more spiritual than the They are. Yeah, that's why they come to help us. A shame. <laughs> they come to help us. One dog said they wanted to have a birthday party. Yeah. Oh, and what's surprising also what I'm talking about. Some of the animals don't want to have babies. They don't want. They don't want to have babies. Yeah. That, you know, that people should really find out before they try to get an animal pregnant. Yeah, I know. They don't want it. They, sometimes they force them. And they see what happened to their babies. You know, the human don't treat them right. What for having more babies out? So to be killed, to be murdered, you know? They know everything in advance. They know when you're going to kill them also. And they say goodbye to their friends and everything. Yeah. The worst part of the dying was how they treated before they died. Yeah, that's it. Yes. They want love. They don't mind dying. They just want love to keep good memory before they go. That's the best for them. Otherwise, it's a terrible negative feeling when you leave the world. Then they cannot come back to help anymore. You see what I mean? They want love all the way till the last breath.
They don't mind dying. They know all the time, but they need love to go. That's all the animals say the same stuff. Yeah. You want to be explained why you do Yes, yes, yes. Just out of respect and also uh, communication. Yes. Not that they don't know, but they like to explain. You know. Yeah, they like to be explained. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Just like if I want to do something on your body, you know, pull your hair or something, I say, I'm going to make your hair beautiful. Then you would allow me, no? I suddenly go there and just grab <laughs> root hair, <laughs> you know, and start messing it up. Of course, she, <laughs> she wouldn't like it, no? <laughs> you just treat them the way you be treated, that's all. Yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah many things, many things. What else did they say? They believe in reincarnation. Oh. They know that yes. Yeah. Yes, they know that. They know that. Yes, yes. Uh, one of my birds, she flew out because she has to go and help a snake and a rabbit. Yeah, she told me that. Yeah. So sometimes it's it's the sudden goodbye. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I say, why you had to go? I say, well, I need to help my friend. <laughs> so she just go. She tried to find a way to go. <laughs> you understand me? through a little crack of window or whatever. She has to go and she has to go. They, they don't mind dying. They just know their time or they know their mission. They, they're happy, but you have to love them, you know, because that's the memory they will bring it with them, just like us. If we die happy, it's better for us, you know? Okay. I feel sorry for you <laughs> that you have to wait <laughs> all this time to have your dinner. <laughs> Enjoy. Bon appetit.